Hello, this is Jared from Commit to Quality. And in this video, we're going to go over Playwright's new UI tool that's been added as part of version 1.32 of Playwright. So basically, Playwright have now introduced this watch mode UI tool, which is basically a watch mode and trace viewer combined. I will say this is currently in preview mode, so expect there to be possibly some issues and some changes to be made to this. However, it's really cool. And as soon as I saw it, I knew I had to make a video about this. Before we start, I just want to say I have set up a project, which I'll put a link in the description to GitHub, which you can clone down and it'll be the start of what I'm doing on here. So you can start and follow along. Like I said, this is part of Playwright version 1.32. So if you're not following along, make sure you update to this or higher and run NPM install to make sure everything has the latest dependencies. In my case, everything is great. So let's quickly take you through the project of what we have, just so you can see. So we've got our config setup. Nothing really different here from the base setup of what we get when we install Playwright. In my tests, I've got two folders, one called group one, which has an example spec file, which is going to commitquality.com, which is my uh, test automation demo website that anyone can use. And it's just filtering something by a product name, clicking the filter button, and then making sure that the results returned match the count of six. Now we do the same then for the test inside the group 1.1 folder but in here it's inside the describe block with um, the same kind of code but one is doing a search for product two and the other is doing a filter for product one and then we have a group two folder which does exact same it's just example spec um, in this one we've got a, a tag of at subscribe on here because I want to show you how the playwright UI tool filters with describe so the reason for all this setup is just to show you how the UI tool kind of organizes everything so enough talking let's go into it if we say npx playwright test dash dash ui and hit enter we'll be meted with the new ui tool which at first glance looks similar to trace viewer because it basically is this right section of the tool is basically trace viewer and if you don't know what trace viewer is or are not completely comfortable with it i'll put a link on the screen now and in the description to my trace viewer tutorial which will give you all of the information that you need today we're gonna more we're gonna pretty much focus on the left part um of the two the left panel of the tool however I'll, I'll touch on some little things but like i say for the trace viewer concept go watch the other video let's go from top down at the top we have a little toggle for light and dark mode so depending how you prefer things to look you can toggle this here you also have a reload button which if you're making updates to your files and folders you can hit reload and it should refresh everything i have seen some issues with when you're changing the actual Playwright config where reload doesn't do anything, so you need to close down the UI tool and reopen it. A little bit more on that further into this video. And then you also have the show output, so show terminal, basically. You don't see anything at the moment. You can clear the terminal, but there's nothing there. Once again, we're going to come back to this after we execute some of our Playwright tests. It allows you to toggle between what you see in the terminal and what you see via Trace Viewer. Moving down a little bit, we've got the filter options. So you can see you can filter things by names or tags. So if I said filter by subscribe, you can see down below that only the subscribe tag tests are appearing. You can also click this and you can filter by even more you can do it by past status failed or skipped once again we'll make a test fail further on into this video and we'll show how we'll filter it by failed and you can also filter by projects so you can see chromium firefox and webkit and no it's not just the default browsers that you can do this is actually taken from the playwright config.ts here where i have the name of chromium firefox and webkit so if i was to add another project into here and name it commit quality if i reloaded all this you should see here that commit quality appears it's just basically giving you the option to run all of your projects at once or a single one or multiple ones whatever you decide you want to do really neat to add really cool once again we'll come back to this when we start executing our tests and then down below then you can now see the structure you find inside vs code it's really neat and one cool thing I want to show is how we can filter by specific tags and how it picks that up for us. But just by default, 
that you see group one and group two, which is the folders that we saw. You've then got the example spec, which lives inside group one, and then the folder of group 1.1. So you can follow this along by saying example spec and group 1.1. If I click into this, you can see describe spec. If I go in further, now what you're seeing is with the example spec file, it goes directly to the test. But because we have the describe block in here, the UI tool is picking this up for us and it's give us that extra layer of group filter tests, which is, if we go to it, it is our describe statement here. And then you can dig into it and see your test files and it'd be the same for group two where it just goes directly to the test file. I think one thing that's missing from this, which I'm going to raise to play, right, is the ability to collapse everything as well because I haven't seen that in here. So that'd be a nice little feature to add into this. So then let's go over the top level. A top level, you can execute all of your tests. This will execute everything you've selected from these filters. So if I was to say Firefox and WebKit, what you'd see down here is multiple versions of the multiple projects versions of that test would execute. But for simplicity, let's run all just in the Chromium project. You can see they're all running. If we go into any of the tests, you can see how kind of trace viewer deals with things like you've seen in the previous viewer you get all that kind of time travel between your different actions so i can go back to the start when it's going to the page go to after and you see it have a look at the action and when it's filling it's highlighting where it is the before and then the after state of product too you've got your source code down below and all the kind of logs of what's going on basically what you get in in trace viewer once again on the filter button you've got the action the before state and the after state of it filtering one cool thing as well is they have the pick locator so you can highlight it click it and then it'll give you your locator which you can add directly into your vs code solution you've got the stop button so if you run all of them and decide you didn't want them all to run you can hit stop and then you also have what I think is the coolest feature, and this is the watch all tests or just watch tests. So let's just look how cool this is. I personally think it's a feature that's been missing from Playwright that now makes it even more of a contender for tools like Cypress. We know Cypress has this kind of ability, but this kind of starts to make Cypress shiver thinking, oh, they've also added this as well now. What we can do is we can say watch all, which will apply to all of our files in here. And what this means is if I go in into any of the test files. So let's just pick on uh, the basic one of example spec. Anytime I update this and save, so what we'll actually do is we'll, we'll make the test fail because we wanted to see some failures. If I say seven, as soon as I hit save and go back to my UI tool, what you should see is that it automatically runs for us in the background. So let's hit that and you can see now it's running i didn't press play or nothing it's doing it because we said all files have watch mode turned on and you can even see that this failed and it's given us the reason down here now if i didn't have this turned on and we go back in and make a change hit save nothing happens because it's not watching now you can do this for all of your tests or you can pick which ones you want it for so i could say i want it for this test only or i could say i'll tell you what i actually want it for this test as well in group two. If I go back and just make a change and save this, we'll see this file is updating and rerunning again. Of course, it's going to fail. If I go to group two example spec and make a change, you might have guessed it. Hit save, it's going to rerun it for us. You can see down here that it's rerunning. However, anything inside this group 1.1 will not rerun. And that's because if I go into the describe spec and make a change, just say save. This is because we haven't got this turned into watch mode. But if I was to say, okay, watch everything inside this uh, group and now make a change and hit save. What you see is everything here is rerunning because we have the watch mode turned on for everything inside this filter. We could even say, okay, don't watch this specific test. If I make a change here, it's only this specific test that is running and this one isn't because I haven't set the watch mode set to all. Now, 
you're probably more than likely going to want to just turn everything on and as you're making your changes you can start seeing things being updated but that's a really cool feature of, of this ui tool I, I think it's amazing absolutely incredible now diving in a little bit more you might have noticed you've got the play button so they do as what you'd expect they'll just re-execute an individual test for you but you've also got this which is going to open your source code in vs code so if i click this what's actually going to happen is in vs code it's going to take me directly to that spec file so we've done it on the describe now let's do it on group two hit open in vs code and you can see it's pushed me back to this example spec in group two, which is really, really useful. I love these kind of things. Like when I done my VS Code extension video, I get happy and excited about these things. We did also touch on filtering by like fail test. We can see we have a fail test. So if I say filter, you can see now we're only picking on the fail tests we have, or you can do it by past. Once again, you're only seeing the past ones. So let's keep it at failed for a moment and show you the terminal output. So you've seen how it kind of looks in Trace Viewer. You can pop out the screen as well, and you can kind of debug from this point of view by inspecting and going through the DOM. Really cool. Like I said, these are just all function functionalities of Trace Viewer, but I just think it's really neat to have. Now, the other thing we touched on was the terminal output. So if I toggle my terminal output, what you see here is everything that we've executed. So tell you what, we'll clear this and we'll rerun this fail test. And you can see what you typically see in VS Code's terminal is what you're seeing here. So you can see it tried to run through, it's give you your assertions that's failed, that it's retried it, expect to have count of seven, but really it got six. Now, before we sign off, another little cool functionality of this is dealing with projects when you have specific tags being filtered. So if we go to the, uh, the Playwright config and in Chromium project, let's say we want to only run specific tests with a given tag. And we've already got a tag created of subscribe. So we'll take that. Let's say filter by subscribe tag. If I save this now, now, what I was originally expecting is when I reload this to see it take place, but what happened, it hasn't. So I have to close down the UI tool and I'm going to reopen it. And what we should see is because Chromium is the only one selected, we should only see the tests with the tag of subscribe. So that's opened. Let's bring it over here. And there we are. You can see because we've only got the Chromium project selected, that's only looking for the tags with, with the subscribe tag on it. We filtered down by this. Of course, if I was to reselect like Firefox and WebKit, everything reshows. And that's because those projects don't have any filter by tag associated with them. But I thought this is a really good thing to show of how really well put together that it handles the organization of things. Like I said, I'm really excited by this tool. Of course, it is in preview mode. So remember, things are going to be updated and changed. There's some other bits of functionality that I personally think could be added to make an even better kind of developer experience. However, this is phenomenal. It's it's a really big improvement for Playwright. And I can see this being used day to day by anyone who's using Playwright. And I can see it becoming one of the most favorite features of Playwright. I'm definitely going to be making more videos as this kind of gets iteratively improved. Hit that subscribe button for this. As always, if you do have any questions or comments, please drop them down below. A like and subscribe is greatly appreciated. Thank you for watching.